Hi, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a line chart that displays the number of open actions at the end of each month. Plus, for the current month, it's going to show you the number of open actions for the most recent date. Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. So this video is going to be all about displaying a line chart that shows the number of open actions at the end of each month. Now, that's fine for a completed month, but for the current month, we also want to show the number of open actions for the, the current date or for the most recent date. So we can see here on the 18th of December, there were four actions open. So the reason that you might want to display a line chart that shows the value at the end of a month is that the underlying data might be collected daily. Okay, so in this example here, we can see that we've got a, a line chart here, which has got a year's worth of data split by day, which looks really, really messy. It's all over the place and it's a little bit difficult to read that. And although you can actually see a, a sort of trend here, it's not a, a particularly great user experience to look at that number of data points in such a small area. Now we could solve that by collecting the data or at the end of each month. However, if you wanted to look at this, for example, over the month and just look at it over the last month and see that daily trend over the month, then you're not gonna have the granularity of the data to be able to do that and, and use that flexibility to look at the different time scales, months, quarters, years or, or whatever. So we do want to collect it daily. So let's change this back to 12 months again. Now, the other thing to bear in mind here is obviously because we're only collecting the value at the end of a month, we are, are gonna miss any peaks or troughs during that month. So if that's important to you, then you, need, you do need to take that into consideration when adopting this approach. So an example of that would be on the 26th, or 20, there were 26 open actions on the 14th of August. Now, by the end of August, that came down to 11. Okay, so we can see here that's 11. So you will miss those peaks and troughs throughout the month. So in this example here, we want to encourage there to be a bit of a push on to close off actions before the end of the month so that we can actually drive down the number of open actions. So that's pretty much why you would use this approach. So the number of open actions like we've got here is what is called a semi-additive number, okay, or measure. So it means that we can't add them along a time dimension, okay? So if we see this here at the bottom, we can see that we've got this, um, this line graph here and we can see the numbers are huge. Now, this is because if we look at the actual measure here, We've got the measure is a sum of the open actions. Now, I've actually added in here, rather than the, the date, I've added in the month year as the, the x-axis. Now, what that's done is it's added up all of the open actions across each day within that month. So with this semi-additive measure, that doesn't make sense to do that. Now, we do use this measure here, which is the sum of the open actions, because it actually does sometimes makes sense to be able to sum up a number of open actions. So if we look at the underlying data here, we can see that we've got the number of open actions per site. And there are three sites here. Now, because it's called semi-additive, and what it means is that it does actually make sense to sum up the values on a specific date across a number of sites. Okay, so you might want to see, and that's exactly what we're, we're, we're showing in that line chart, the number of open actions across all the sites on a specific date. And that is valid to then sum up the number of open actions if it's only on a specific date. Okay, and the same accounts for, for example, um, a balance in an account or the number of work orders that are in our backlog. They are both examples or other examples of semi-additive measures. And we can see there are 17 actions open at the end of July. And I apply a filter here for the end of July. And we can see if we sum up these actions here, that's going to be 8, 2 and 7 is 17. So it does make sense to sum up these on a specific date, but not along um, a date dimension. Okay, so you can add it up for the, for the entire month because it's that because of the, the semi-additive nature of this particular measure. Okay, so let's get into how we actually calculate this. So I've actually offered up two different approaches. The first approach is if we want to show the date as the x-axis. Okay, now that's the approach I would use. It's slightly more involved in terms of creating the ducks, but that's the one I would use. 
and I'll explain why in a second. Now the second option here is if we use that month year as the, the x-axis here, okay? So let's look at this one first because that's the easiest one in terms of the DAX code. So we're going to go into this measure here and it's fairly straightforward. We use this function here called last non-blank value and then we go across the date table and then we're going to go and get the, the value here of open RCA investigation actions. So what that's going to do is in the, the context of each one of these data points here, which is the month and the year, so for a, a specific month and year, so if we take January, for example, during January is going to find the last non-blank value for the date. Okay, so it's going to go through all the dates in January and find the last non-blank value, which is going to be the last day of that particular month. And then it's going to return that and it's going to add it into here. Now, that works fine. However, this is a categorical x-axis here rather than a continuous x-axis that you get with this um, date here. So with that, there's a few um, pros and there's a few cons between the two of them, actually. Now, the first one is at the end of this, the number for the current month, it's not going to tell you the date here. OK, and the tooltip is not going to tell you the date. It's only going to tell you the number for December. So we do need to recognize that this is the 18th of the month or whatever, whatever that is. Now, if you use the other approach, you can see that this is on the 18th of the month. And for each one of these, you can see it does tell you the, the date at the end of the month, which is less important, for to be honest. Now, the second thing is when it comes to analytics. So we've got this options here to add mins, maxes, etc. There are slightly less options here when you've got this categorical date here than there is if you use this other approach at the top here. OK, we can see we've got forecasts and we've got find anomalies and other bits and pieces that um, that are not available here. So there's a couple of pros and cons to using the, the two different approaches. So let's look at the, the DAX code for this one here, which is actually going to be using the date as the, the x-axis. So if we come in here, we can see the x-axis is actually the date from the date table. OK, so here's the DAX code here. Open actions at the end of the month. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a few variables here and then we're going to pull them all together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the last date displayed for the visual x-axis. So we're going to go and we're going to find the, the, the final date here, which is going to be the 18th of December. OK, so the calculate statement, first of all, it's going to select all of the dates that are displayed in the line graph here. So it's going to be all of these dates in the x-axis. And that's going to be the dates that are returned by this filter at the top here, this slicer here, so for the last 12 months. Then for all of these dates, we're going to go and the 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 expression is going to be the last non-blank value, which is going to go through the dates table that we've got in this, we've selected here, and then it's going to find the last date which has got a value before the next value is blank, okay? So that's effectively what the last, last non-blank does. So it's going to return the date where we've got the last date in the dates table that's selected in the graph that's got a value here for this open RCA's investigation actions. So hopefully that's, that's fairly straightforward. So that's the max date. Next, we're going to check if the current date is the last date of the month. OK, so this is creating like a flag within the, the expression here. So this is going to use a switch statement and it's going to select whichever one's true. First, um, we're going to use the selected value. So for each date, it's going to say, is this the end of month for this particular date? OK, so basically it's checking to see, is this date the the end of a month. So if the date is equal to the 16th, it's not the end of the month. If it's the 31st of July, it's the end of the month. And if that is true, if the current date is equal to the, the date for the end of the month, then it's true, otherwise it's false. Okay, so the final result here is going to use another switch statement. And the first thing it's going to check for is, is the, the current value here for the date equal to the max date? So is it the, the final date in the or the most recent date in the, the line graph. OK, so today's date or whatever the last time the, the data was extracted from the, the database. If it is, we're going to show that value here for the open number of investigation actions. Next, we're going to, if it's not the, if it's not the, the max date, next it's going to check, is it the end of the month? So is the date one of the dates that's the end of a month? If it is, we're going to show the open investigation actions. Otherwise, it's going to default to the, the default for the switch statement, which is blank. OK, and that's what's going to give us this ability to show a number only if it's the end of the month or only if it's the most recent date that we've captured for or, or during the current month.
Okay, so here's the final result here. We've got the number of open actions at the end of each month, and this one here is the number of open actions for the most recent date, which is the 18th of December in this example here. Now, this is particularly important to get that continuity if you've got a, a line graph like we've got here, or a line chart, plus we've also got a report of the dashboard that shows the number of current open actions, and it just creates continuity between the two figures. So hopefully you find this useful. And um, if you did, then it's always appreciated if you could give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, I tend to release one every week, then hit the subscribe button and press the wee bell and you'll get a notification whenever I publish a new video. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.